Probably the number one issue with mechanical keyboards is the noise, but first we have to know what produces the sound on a mechanical keyboard. We have a bottoming out noise. This is what happens when the key switch reaches the bottom of its travel. However, you can of course avoid this by not going the full distance. Then we have the topping out noise or the return noise. And this is when the switch returns to its original position. And both of these sounds are amplified by the keycaps and the enclosure. But if you have a clicky switch, it will of course make that loud clicking noise. So there's a couple of ways we can try and combat this. The easiest and cheapest option are O-rings. These can be had in different thicknesses and hardnesses and are pushed over keycap stem. And what this does is just dampen the bottoming out noise, however we still have that return sound. We also have soft landing pads which are of a similar nature and also clip-on solutions such as Zalencios which are similar but they also damp the upstroke which is awesome. However, these are a bit expensive. Enter the Cherry MX Silent switches. These are available in Cherry MX Silent Red or Silent Black. However, the Silent Red switch is sometimes called the Cherry MX Pink switch. Fortunately, Cherry have their switches on Sketchfab so we can more easily see what's going on. So just having a look around, on top we have the stem where we put our keycap on. This then slides down with the coil spring offering resistance and interacts with the cross contacts and that's what actuates the switch at 2mm. And of course we have the housing all around it. But what's special about these silent variants are these little notches. This is what they call two component tappets and are double shot into the stem itself. This is made from a TPE which stands for thermoplastic elastomer and has a rubbery characteristic which of course absorbs some sound. And the cool thing is, is that it's on the bottom and the top, meaning that both the bottoming out sound and the return top out sound is dampened. Like the other solutions, the actuation distance is still capped at 2mm, however the overall travel distance is of course shortened, but by only 0.3mm. That's a really tiny loss considering that it's for both the bottom and top. And that's probably the greatest downside to silencing switches. They reduce the total travel distance, which gets some getting used to, but they also cushion the downstroke, which may be a good or bad thing depending on the person. And it also takes away that sharpness that mechanical key switches have that membrane keyboards don't. The keyboard I have here is the Vimilo VA68MG. It's a stunning keyboard that I'll be reviewing soon. And of course it's fitted with Cherry MX Silent Red switches. I'm just gonna pull out some keyboards and give some sound tests. But what we have to consider is that the enclosure and the keycaps of the keyboard do make a difference in the sound, but we can still get a good idea of what they represent.
On here I have the four main Cherry MX key switches, brown, black, red and blue, and in the middle is the silent red switch. This is without a case so the sound is a bit more muted since it isn't amplified. And as we can hear, these are quiet. Of course, compared to blues or any clicky switch, it's night and day, but compared to its linear counterparts, we can notice a huge difference. Browns and reds are very similar sounding to each other, and the bottoming out and return noises are really, really clear and sharp, and so different to the softness of the silence. Where this does fail are the stabilized keys. They still do have a dampened downstroke, but the return sound is still sharp and clear, since there's nothing to dampen the stabilized stems. And to add to that, stabilized keys, especially on lighter switches like this, tend to have a good rattle. But the clearest example, as always, is that spacebar, and this is no exception. The keyboard is only as quiet as its loudest key, and since the spacebar is so oftenly used, it kind of negates the effect of the rest of the silent keys. We can of course fix this, however the return sound will still remain. As for how it felt, it took a day to get accustomed to it. At first you feel the keystroke is that touch shorter and it's kind of hard to explain, but since I'm so used to a standard switch, it felt like my fingers were being just restricted, like they're being prematurely stopped, but I quickly got over that. But let's open up the switch to have a better look. I desoldered this before and we can actually see how the top out sound is dampened from the outside. These are easy to open with a flathead screwdriver or tweezers. There's still a bit of solder on the pins so I left the contacts inside. And it's just like the 3D model we saw earlier. When we compare it to a standard Cherry MX red switch, pretty much the only difference are the thermoplastic tabs on the stem. And as we can see, we can kind of move it around showing that rubbery characteristic. Cherry MX switches are also known to be a bit scratchy. This is mostly caused by the friction created between the slider and the housing, but I don't find it as scratchy as Cherry MX red switches. Off center, you can of course feel it, but straight down, I think they're quite smooth. It's a bit different with these switches with the dampeners kind of putting me off in determining how smooth they are but they are definitely smoother than stock reds, but not as smooth as, say, Gatoron reds. Overall, I've grown quite accustomed to these switches, and I'm a fan of them. It does take a bit of getting used to, because at first I really wasn't enjoying the typing experience, but the main objective of this switch is to, of course, dampen the sound, and it does achieve that quite well. It's of course not dead silent, but it's a huge difference, and while it is cool to have a quiet key switch just for the sake of it, I think it's a huge development for the idea of using a mechanical keyboard in a working environment, whether it be a workplace or a school, or simply just having a quiet keyboard to keep everyone happy at home. Because sound can be a huge deterrent for mechanical keyboards being used in these environments, and I know it's acceptable at some places, and it's just dependent on the people around you, but for the most part, it's common courtesy to keep it down, and I think this is a great solution to the problem.